Welcome to the Washdown Podcast, episode 50, and today is going to be our Christmas special. James, Chris, and I are going to talk about what it means to be a first responder around this holiday season and the things that kind of we go through, you know, being away from family and the type of calls that we run, you know, around this time of year. So sit back, relax, and enjoy episode number 50 of the Washdown Podcast. What? I like how he's covering his moobs. But I'm warm. <laughs> moobs. Oh, <yeah>. <laughs> it's still warm. And here's even the best part. That is Brownie's favorite blanket to lay on. Well, I love dogs, so it works out. Oh, yeah. I knew it, I knew you'd be fine with it. <laughs> but I'm warm, so fuck you guys. Yeah. So, hey. I, I, I know we were talking about what kind of topic to talk about. Uh-huh. I want to talk about moobs. You want to talk about moobs? Moobs. Specifically yours. Why? Yours are bigger. <laughs> I entirely doubt it. Whatever. You can only do three push-ups. I can do four. You, you do realize a push-up is pushing away from the floor, right? Oh, fuck. Not having your belly still <laughs> touching it. <laughs> Shots fired. I like it. Well, it's because my dick will always just still be on the ground no matter how high I push. So, ha. And with that, welcome to the Christmas episode of the Washdown Podcast. Thanks, like, James. Is it like Christmas like Rudolph or Christmas like Die Hard? <laughs> Die Hard. Die, Die Hard. hard. <laughs> I'm going to Hans Gruber his ass here after we're done. Oh, well, we should have put like Christmas decorations and shit out. Um, no. I mean, even if we'd have used a short one, it would have covered him up. We should have put Christmas decorations. <laughs> <laughs> we could have had Moran sit here and been like he was still behind the camera. <laughs> With little candles. And... Do you have Christmas ornaments? Like, do you have Christmas stuff we could put out? Um, I have Christmas ornaments, yes. We're not putting them on this table, though. <sighs> Why? Why? Because I hate decorating. Why can't we be festive? <laughs> I hate being festive, too. <laughs> this is how unfestive I am. Rachel wants Christmas lights on the house. I'm paying to have it done. That's what I always do. Yeah. You Thank you on that I'm, I'm perfectly capable of doing it myself. I just don't but want I don't to. Wanna. But I don't want to. <laughs> she asked me how much it was going to cost earlier today, and I told her, and she's like, uh, and I was like, yeah, I'm not doing it. So if you want Christmas lights, that's what's happening. <laughs> no, there's, a, there's another option. What's that? She gets up there and does it. Oh, yeah. No. Why not? I don't have a ladder tall enough for her to use. So, so put up your ladder, have her climb up mm -hmm. on your shoulders. You climb up, and you take her and you throw her like a cheerleader. She's small. She's wiry. <laughs> yeah. I can't see how that could possibly go bad. Come on, we'll film it. We'll put it on the podcast. It'd be awesome. We might actually make that work for Facebook Live. Yep. <laughs> We Considering even, how like an evil can evil event, yeah, how we, could, we could even pause it an and failure. circle your face and then circle her, mm -hmm. and have the voiceover. And when this is it where real goes wrong. Jeremy knew he <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> oh. I mean, it's not like we don't know how to treat an injury. True. I'll be drunk and laughing too <laughs> much, so I'm out. <laughs> I'm tailgating <laughs> this event. <laughs> Yeah, yeah we'll selling, bring the smoker out. Yeah. <laughs> selling some tickets to that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it, why not? We'll ask her whenever she comes down here later, whenever yeah. we do her episode. We'll, we'll make sure we, we do it in the yard part, too, so she lands. She has yeah. the grass a little softer than concrete. Yeah. Especially if we do it on the one side of the house, it's a, a nice slope, so yeah. she just roll down the hill. Perfect. Yeah. That's fine. Right, so, to, right to the mega mover. <laughs> <laughs> Have it pre-set yeah, up. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, dispatch, we're going to need a company for standby <laughs> for an event. <laughs> why is there an ambulance parked outside your house, and why is there a smoker going? <laughs> <laughs> Just tell all my neighbors, hey, come on over. Beers in the cooler. Yeah. We'll be done in a bit. Yeah. I'm down. I think this, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to need her to get on board with this. Yeah, I can't see what could possibly, possibly go wrong. We'll make, we'll make some rum punch. Oh, yeah. You guys have no help. <laughs> when have we ever been helpful? Yeah. We 
You'd probably actually do better on this podcast without us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, full agreement. <laughs> I'll take my pink slip. I want a severance package, though. It's in the mail. Two weeks. No, because I'm working another two weeks. <laughs> That's some bullshit. I bet it was my day off, he'd fire me. Oh, yeah. Only if you stole boxes. At 459 <laughs> on a Friday. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. 459 and 30 seconds. <laughs> I'll give you those 30 seconds. Because I'm a nice guy. Yeah. 15 seconds for reaction, and now I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're close. <laughs> All right, so like we were kind of talking about before we started the camera, you know, you guys had the idea of talking about being festive. Festive. First responders with the holiday season, mm-hmm. you know, and the challenges that we have. Contrary to popular belief, we have to work. Yeah. On the holidays. Yeah. We don't get Thanksgiving and Christmas off. And so you couple that with being away from your family, running, you know, the calls that we run. And like Chris and I were talking about, I don't think I've ever worked a Thanksgiving that I didn't run somebody who had a heart attack or a stroke or something and died. Yeah. Same with Christmas. I, I, I've been doing this since 2009. I can't think of any. So the first station we worked at, we actually ran two in the same house. Yeah. Remember it was, it was Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving and then Christmas because we worked both. Yeah. And it was at Christmas Day. We're like, that sounds familiar. Yeah. And it was a father and son. Yeah. It was the father. Father died on Thanksgiving. Yeah. And that was medical related. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, it was a suicide. I think it was what it was ruled as. Yeah. Uh, overdose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My, my grandma passed away on Thanksgiving, like three hours after we ate my freshman year of college. It, it, I, I, you know, we always kind of, it's like a little joke in the fire station or in the ER, like we laugh about it. And I, you know, sometimes we're like, oh, well, you know, they're finally just relaxed and they're around their family and they can just go in peace. And other times they're like, well, it's probably because their family killed them. <laughs> <laughs> you got to cook that turkey all the way, dude. Yeah. yeah. Like I go into some of those houses on Thanksgiving and Christmas, I'm like, oh, I know why they did departed yeah i get it now (laughs) aunt Jean and billy bob over there have been arguing all day (laughs) little ray has been just being a shit and yeah grandma got tired of it i've had enough of this shit deuces yeah (laughs) fuck all y'all for life so dude i remember when when jane's grandma was on hospice i mean it wasn't it was in between the holidays and like she'd kind of go up and down (laughs) and then i want to say it was between the holidays can't remember. I know it was cold, so yeah, I think it was. And well, it's Missouri, so who fucked it she, up? She, uh, yeah. Uh, everybody went over to the house one night, her aunt's house, playing cards, had dinner, you know, all that kind of stuff. We just pulled back in the garage, and her phone rang. Back, back out and go. But she was waiting for everybody to be there mm-hmm. one last time. Yeah. It's, you know, I think that's kind of why you see, might see it on holidays with older people. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not, I guess, like the the holiday, but if I remember correctly, my dad had his stroke on Valentine's Day. Seems about right. Yeah. Yeah. It was, my it, that's my dad's birthday. Yeah. It was either Valentine's Day or the day before. Yeah, it was right around then. Yeah. So, because he was supposed to be coming home from the rig that morning. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't get it. What's interesting, though, is like you never hear it on 4th of July. Now people will blow shit up on for like they will accidentally lose. <laughs> it's like, like the guy we ran. Yeah, on Fourth of July, but like you right-handed or left-handed? Well, you're left-handed now. <laughs> yeah, but like it, it's literally just that things. I don't. Well, there's just so many factors into it. Yeah. This we know that depression gets ramped up during the holidays. Well, I think it's and, you know that winter. What's it called? Winter affectation, depression, or less daylight, colder temperatures. Yeah, that that's a real thing. Mm-hmm. It's gray all the time. That's why yeah. Seattle leads in suicides every year. Yeah. So, and you know, like you said, winter time, that stuff goes up. What? Are, when are the big holidays? In the winter time. You know, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Those are the two big holidays. Where you got family and everybody gets together. So, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. When you add the stress on, I mean, Thanksgiving's stressful. 
be watching my wife and my sister-in-law and my mom trying to figure out who's cooking what and who's doing what and where they're going to do it and like it's just food man give me yeah. a, give me a ham sandwich or give me a bologna sandwich i don't get some chips i don't care yeah no i want some turkey stuffing cranberry sauce out of the can it is better out of the can it's, see i, I mean i, I, don't, I don't get me wrong i like fresh too but if you put the two next to it and i can only have one I'm taking Give me it the out can. of the can. I, yeah. I, I want the gelatin. Yeah, <laughs> me too. It spreads nice. Yeah. It spreads nice over the turkey. See, I don't spread it. I just get my fork under it, pick the whole thing up. And... Yeah. No, I like to mix it with the turkey. Just get a little bit of it. No. Yeah. There needs to be the right proportion of cranberry sauce and turkey in the bite. And then if there's not no. stuffing, I'm sorry, you get the fuck out. Yeah. Oh, my God. Jane makes this clam stuffing. No, I'm out. I refuse to eat it. I tried it the first time. The first year we were together on Thanksgiving, I tried it. I was like, fuck no. I'm like, what is this monstrosity? Like, uh, And I like clams. I like oysters. I mac, like that stuff. Mac and cheese and tuna? It's amazing. No. No. Amazing. <laughs> no. You guys don't know. No. That's you how he got no out idea. of cooking at our former station. Because our captain said everybody needs to take a turn to cook, and his first <laughs> meal was tuna mac and cheese. And then our captain said, you don't have to cook anymore. Genius. Communist. Um, Somebody didn't grow up a little poor. Well. You're right, I didn't. <laughs> it's all about privilege. This is white privilege I carry with me, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> you had to take it racial, didn't you? What? God, you're always touting your white privilege. <laughs> Always. Yeah. Don't throw it in my face, man. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Not cool. Um but with kind of we talked about how somehow everybody <laughs> dies on the holidays. <laughs> I, it, it's funny cuz it's true. That's what's like weird about it. But we also have to take a step back too and look at its effects on those taking care of them. Fire department, police department, the ER that we take them to. It's a uh, Trust me, on a holiday, I would rather spend time with my family than literally the worst day of the working year where everybody dies. Yeah. Everybody dies. Yeah. And from the police side, everybody shoots each other too. <laughs> there <ain't> no, <laughs> well, that's there ain't because... No, no. <laughs> well, I think you have, you have an increased alcohol consumption on those days because when the family gets together, about five minutes in, you're all right, give me the beer. Or yeah. you pop the bottle or whatever. Or she's grandma drink. and grandpa go home. <laughs> Than everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> it's on. Monopoly comes out. You know, now you add Monopoly and alcohol, what do you get? Pistols. Yeah. <laughs> Pistols at 20 paces. Because yeah. nobody follows the rules of Monopoly. No, everybody cheats at Monopoly. We all make up our own rules. Yeah. Yeah, you can trade, sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't trade that one. Yeah. No. No, you can't have a cash transaction, too. You can't borrow money. I remember Christmas... Two years ago, I ran three shootings just myself, just at my station, down south. And I was like, what the fuck? And there were just, I think there were like 18 of them, 19 of them that day. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, it's Christmas, motherfuckers. Damn. Yeah. So how many of those were the celebratory gunshots in the air and the bullet coming oh, down? Oh, no, they were patients. Oh, I don't know. But still, it's Christmas. And it was in like the afternoon and evening, so they weren't right, shooting so, at Santa Claus. All right, so yeah. look, look, at, look at it this way. The area that you work in now, it's poor. It's a poor area, for the most part. Mm. So when you're poor, you don't have that money to spend on gifts for people. But which, you got which, money to spend on bullets. But unfortunately... Yeah, and fireworks are cheaper than bullets right now. Yeah, but unfortunately, Christmas has become about gifts. And presents. And, very materialized holiday. I mean, we see it all over TV. The commercials have already started. Mm -hmm. And that all plays a factor. So now, when you can't afford to be given a gift or you or give a gift, it just becomes another day. And what else skyrockets, too? The domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if those are actual factors, 
but to me, that's what it well, seems I mean, like. They, they are. I mean, I we, think that, I think that plays we run, the, you, we run the assaults just as much as we run the cardiac arrest. And, yeah, I mean, you get that. There's anecdotal evidence. I mean, it's not scientifically studied yeah. or whatever. But yeah, I can't I pull mean, up a study or anything. But from what I've seen, yeah. I mean, like you said before, increased alcohol consumption, family members in tight spaces, and we don't. You don't always get along with family. No, but it's like in laws, you know, my sister's husband's a dick and i hate him and but they're coming over for the holidays Mm -hmm. and it's going to be a great idea to drink that fifth of jack or their kids are hellions and they don't respect your house and they don't discipline them don't think i won't trip your kid (laughs) (laughs) i'm like oh what'd you learn (laughs) don't play by uncle chris you know but that's the thing like i think so many people in today's society, especially as, as much as we've materialized the holidays, they don't see, like, I go back to the analogy of the duck. On the top of the water, it looks calm and cool, but underneath, it's paddling to the last off. Like, nobody sees what goes on. Like, they see their own little window, their own little Christmas party, their own little gifts. They don't realize, like, what happens on Christmas, what happens on Thanksgiving. They're like, oh, well, mine was great. Well, it was a shit show for everybody else, it, it, which it is. Mm-hmm. The hospitals are overwhelmed with sick patients. The EMS is overwhelmed with sick patients. Law enforcement's overwhelmed with violence. Like that is the reality. Well, of we, and, and when when the police departments are overwhelmed with violence, so are we. Because mm-hmm. now we're going yeah. there for the medical part. They always drag us into their problems. Mm-hmm. It's like they can't figure it out without us. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know why. But like it's <sighs> go red team. Everybody's got to have heroes. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but in the bigger picture too, like. That takes a toll on us because it's it every year. Every year. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Like, like, oh, that one Thanksgiving four years ago. No, it's every fucking Thanksgiving you work. Yeah. Well, and I mean, you couple that with the fact of being away from your family, and then nine times out of ten, I mean, yeah, I've been on sh- my regular shift on Thanksgiving and Christmas a, a few times, but I've worked overtime on those days more than not. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. either I'm on the back end of a 48 or 72 or i'm at the front end of one so we couple that with well crap i'm not going to get to see my wife and my family for two days because i'm working thanksgiving and good friday or not good friday black friday, black friday. wow i just jumped to the springtime i'm ready for it already but, you know, so I'm going to be gone for two days, and now I'm going to deal with all this crap. You know, yeah, I signed up for it. Don't give me that line. But still. I would rather be with my, f- like, there, there is that point of it, too, like, hey, assholes, I'm here dealing with you slapping your wife because you can't get along, and I don't get to see my wife today. Get your shit together. Like, there, it's kind of frustrating because, again, people don't understand what goes into, like. Yeah. So, you bring up frustrating. How are you going to deal with it? Are you going to put it in your box? No, I usually just tell them they're stupid. You can't really do that either, James. Well, I mean, sometimes... There's a level of professionalism and sometimes that we a, need to maintain. But here's the point. Where's professionalism and reality I under, I understand that. But something that you need to realize is it's not your place, and it's never your place to do that. And whose is it? It the captain on your crew. That's whose responsibility that is. If something like that needs to be said, which in reality that's not for us to say, because it's not our job to judge people and to tell them they're living their life wrong or whatever. But you, as a paramedic and a firefighter, that's not the interaction you should be having with people. Yeah, but you're not there. Captain's not always there. I'll give you that one. So I'm saying, like, at what point? Then you leave it up to the cops, and if they don't want to do it, like I said, it's not your place. So who? That's the point. It, we we are really good at kicking the can down the road, right? We see it. We see it in our frequent flyers. We see it like we see it in our continual CHFers or COPDers that smoke cigarettes and then call every other day for breathing treatment. We're really great at saying, "Oh, that's not our place. We'll kick the can down the road." To what extent? To, I mean, to, to what extent? Till, you know, it's sometimes the reality is, is what the reality is. This this job cannot always be a 
Chick Fil A presentation where it's smiles and handshakes. I did didn't say that it. The, there's there sometimes was. has to be this. This action was stupid. Your behavior is stupid. Your there's a way to approach it without using those words. And there's sometimes. a way. There's a way to be nice about it. Sometimes. Then sometimes they don't get it. Sometimes the only language they understand what, is the what do language you think, yeah, but what do you they're think yelling the, at you. Yeah, but what do you think the outcome is? Do you think that they're magically, when you tell them they're a piece of shit and they're an idiot for still smoking while they have COPD and they're on oxygen, do you think that makes them change? No. Or do you run those same people a week later when they get out of the hospital? Remember a week later. Yeah. So you're, you're not making a difference by being a dick. And is it really making you feel better? Obviously not because you're Some days. <laughs> so, No, but it's not like it's an everyday thing. You know, it's not like we just yell at every patient we see, but there are those occasions. I mean, Chris, you've had them too where you just have I have never up talked down to a patient. Belligerent patients in the never. back of your ambulance and you're just like, "Get out." Get out. We uh there's been increased discussion with, you know, in, in our department and around about how to deal with the violent and combative and very disrespectful patients mm -hmm. that we see so often that often end up assaulting EMS. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, it's, it's a, such a gray area and it, and it incorporates so much. There's the professionalism aspect. There's the safety aspect. There's the legal aspect, like mm -hmm. what can and can't you do? And at the end of the day, there's this kind of like, we didn't wake up at three in the morning and said, let's go check on Bob and see how his headaches doing. No, Bob, you called us. Mm -hmm. We're here because of you. You called our professionalism and expertise. Now let us use our professionalism and expertise, which does not constitute you screaming and yelling and cussing and attempt to assault us. I, I, I don't disagree. And that also seems to get ramped up during the holidays, too. Everybody's drunk. Everybody's drunk and emotional. So, I mean, it's just... Again, there, there's a place and a time for everything. You don't call every drunk an idiot, but we're not going to lie to our patients if they're doing something stupid. <laughs> that's true. You should never lie to your patient because that's probably the biggest way to break trust and make them not cooperate mm -hmm. is by lying to them. So, but there's, like I said, there has to be a level of professionalism. And this is an interesting conversation now, too, with you being a company officer. Mm -hmm. Like, how you how you deal with that? Do you stand there and let your crew get berated? Do you, you know, that's, and you may not know the answer to that question because you may just learn with experience. Do you? I haven't had that situation yet. Yeah. Um, I did have the conversation yesterday with one of the people I was working with about, basically about the same thing, but it was a very surface com conversation. And I think I made my point clear of, you know, we're going to be nice and professional. And when it comes time to be not nice and someone has to be firm, that's my job. That's not your job. Jeremy's the bouncer. You're the cooler. No, no well, I'm, I'm the, cool the cooler. He's the cooler. We're the bouncer. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, nice. Easy, Patrick. Good yeah. firefighter, bad firefighter technique. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, man. But look, I've had my fair share of combative patients yeah. and just people being dicks the way that i've found that has worked for me personally to deal with them is to just be nice and be matter of fact and not leave wiggle room and say look i understand that you're that's upset a, that's a big one Le like because they'll test every oh, yeah. single little boundary oh, yeah. they have and it's a it's a straight up you it's almost like treating them like a child, but not really. Because if you treat them like a child, then they're going to fight back. Mm -hmm. You just have to tell them exactly what's going to happen in the order that it's going to happen. And just don't leave anything ambiguous. And that's worked out fairly well for me. Now, do I, it doesn't work every time because no. sometimes you just have those people who want to fucking fight. But the, the, the but, nice thing is, too, and I, I've gotten a lot better about this because the other medic i work with at my station is very good about that and i've set the expectations very early in the call when you when you can tell like oh this is going to be a problem mm -hmm. patient here's what we're going to do here's how we're going to do it 
here's my expectation of you. And if at any point this is not followed, this ends. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, it gets to the point, like, we had one the other day, just that drunk person with chest pain, but 23 years old. And PD <laughs> arrested her. And, <laughs> oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> Everybody has chest pain when they get arrested. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had one of those yesterday morning. And, they were uh, going to get a mm-hmm. ticket, and they had shortness of breath yep so we're there and she's still giving the damn ticket you know what add four more yeah the 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 officer i thought was pretty awesome uh you know he called us we showed up checked her out she was fine she spun him a story about how she was going to go clear across the city to the er because that's what took her insurance obviously there was a conversation after we got back in the fire truck because whenever we started heading back to the station they were in front of us and she went to the hospital that was literally a block away <laughs> and he followed her all the way into the er well see and i think that's something that's that needs to change countrywide yeah you have the right to medical care i fully believe that you know here but you don't get to go f- past 17 hospitals here's to a, go to this one here's a question is a right where does a emergency right? service so on, right. well, so emergency service. I understand you, what you. I understand. Calling us as I an emergency. Closest doctor it is. I understand what you're saying. However, and let me play devil's advocate for this, okay? Because it, I agree. If you call nine one one, you should go to the closest hospital. However, insurance companies have made it to where your closest hospital might not be in network, and then you're going to face a huge bill. If that you, a lot of the people that we run all right, so don't have the money for. If you can afford the ambulance ride or you're you're so sick that you have to go to the hospital by ambulance, you, that's the closest appropriate facility. Mm-hmm. If it's because of an insurance thing and you still need to go clear across the city, the insurance will put your ass in your car and drive on down. Call an Uber. I don't, it, I'm not trying to be mean, but at the same time, it's a waste of city resources. I I didn't disagree with you. And this is every single city out there that this yeah, happens. I didn't disagree with you. And the, let me tell you about insurance companies. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, you want to talk do, about a goddamn scam? Do you have your show, soapbox? And remember, folks, this is the Christmas episode. <laughs> no, this was... It's a this scam. Was, this was a question we had at the station it yesterday, is. right? Yeah. What's the difference between a right and a privilege? And the, the reason we asked that because, right, so in the United States... Mm-hmm. You have a right for the opportunity of the privilege of a driver's license, right? Mm-hmm. You, you, that's your right to go get a driver's license. However, if you fuck around and find out why you have a driver's license, you lose the privilege of having it. And th- this discussion came up when we were talking about combative patients yesterday. You have the right to health care until you fuck around and find out too many times. You lose that privilege. It It is what it is. So is... Because we always say healthcare is a right, is it, or is it a privilege? Because you can lose it if you do too much stupid stuff. Yeah, hospitals can kick you out. Mm-hmm. So how come how, how, how come that doesn't extend to EMS agencies? See, it, off the record, it does. Obviously, does it? Off the record. Um, I mean, like literally, the patient we had the other day, just two days ago, said it forty-eight. She twenty-three with chest pain, motherfucked the cops, and we did. We're like, hey, we're gonna. This stops. We'll take you to the hospital, but you're gonna cooperate. We're gonna. You said you had chest pain. We're gonna do a full workup. We're gonna. We're gonna do what you asked. Man, yeah, you ain't doing something. Like, hey, the minute you get in the ambulance, here's how it's gonna go. Fine. She got in the ambulance. She wanted to be an asshole. She had about five warnings. I said, "All right, we're done. Get out." And we got out. We pulled the cop back out and we lowered her down. We PD's like, "What's going on?" Well, she's being belligerent. She's cussing us out. She's threatening to kill us. We're done with this. Oh, okay. Well, I want to go to the hospital. I don't want to go to jail. What if I say please? No. You've lost that privilege. This is done. You've had the opportunity and you've wasted it. But see, we're set up to where you can't do that. That's the problem. We don't have that power to make a decision, even though we've gone through how many hours of training? How many hours of clinicals? Yeah, we technically don't have the right to refuse service. I mean, I'm sorry. If you start threatening violence towards me and my partner, you forfeit that right. And I'll stand on that hill till I die. I don't disagree I don't with disagree you. I don't disagree either. I don't, I mean, I don't think you're going to find it. 
I mean, anybody I can, that listens to this podcast that's going to disagree. Now, would I have handled it a little bit different maybe? Yeah. I probably would have just pulled over, had the cop get in, handcuff her to the we cot. We hadn't even left yet. Oh. <laughs> that was the best part. We hadn't even left yeah. yet. <laughs> I w- would have made the cop ride. And no, I'd have had her handcuffed. No, because cops are single. One cop per vehicle. And they're not leaving their vehicles. That's, and that's you know the problem. It. So now like, we, you, you don't have a choice. Now that's that's a that's one of those unwritten staffing rules that people don't understand, right? Like, yeah, we are losing cops left and right. And what happens is then it's we don't have two person cars; it's we the, have one person the, cars. It's the domino effect. Yeah. yeah. And and the, the, let me be clear. Yeah, I'm. I still do what's right. I'm still going to treat this person. We're still going to go to that hospital because that's what's right. It doesn't mean I can't bitch about it. It, I'm still not happy about it. I still hate insurance companies because it's run by bean counters who don't know a damn thing. I'm sorry, they don't. You no, def- you defy with them on everything. Yeah, they're not doctors; they're actuaries. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm tired, and I'm tired of the abuse that, and the the sense of entitlement that people in this country have. It's all about me. No, the fuck it's not. It is not about you. It's about us. You know, I've, I've had this no. conver- conversation with my captain. You know, he was kind of along the lines of like, you know, why are, why do you get unhappy with the, the drunks on the sidewalks? You know, why do you make a walk away? Things like that. And I'm like, hey, let's look at this from this perspective, right? We show up every day to work. What's the expectation that we check our rig out in the morning? We make sure it's ready to serve the citizens of the district that we have, right? Throughout the day, if we use stuff, we replace it, we fix it, we clean it, we make sure it's ready for the next call to serve the citizens of our district. Why do we not take our fire truck all over the city to run errands? So it's in our district to serve the citizens of our district like the taxpayers do. And to me, it's the same thing as the ambulance. You you guys know my district, just like your old district. It's violent. It's poor. There's sick people in it. The ambulances, the services of that district are better served being ready for those than they are for a drunk that doesn't want to be cold or a drunk that wants a place to sleep. Those are a misuse of resources. And it's my belief that it's our responsibility to maintain those rigs to stay in service so they can treat those individuals in a timely manner before they're wasted on individuals that do not need them. And if all I'm doing is giving you a ride to the hospital, you do not need an ambulance. Yeah, especially when the hospital is right across the street. Yeah. I mean, that's the reality of what people do to EMS. Mm-hmm. If, oh, no, I get, all, I get in if, faster on the ambulance. No, you don't. I mean, how many times I've taken somebody to triage on the cot? I'm like, all right, hop off. There you are. No, I'm in the waiting room. Yep. Yep. No, Michael, hop off. Let's go. Yep. I, mean, I mean, that's the reality of it, right? If, if all we're doing, if we... If we treat you, obviously, yes, you, you can get the ambulance. If all we're doing is giving you a ride, you don't need us. And it's my job, in my opinion, to professionally educate you in that. There's no need for an ambulance. We will do nothing for you other than give you a ride. I think a lot of... And bill you, you $1,200. Mm-hmm. A lot of you guys' frustrations, it seems like, could be mitigated if we would pass an ordinance like they have in a lot of European cities where you have the right to refuse service. Mm -hmm. If you guys deem it is not medically necessary to transport that person, you can refuse them service. And also, okay, we will take you. You will pay right now. University of Oklahoma did that hospital. Walk into the ER. If it was not an emergency, 500 bucks right now. Or you don't get seen. Worked. Their their pay, their ER dropped, and um, patient intakes and um, how busy they were. Mm-hmm. But then, now the other hospitals got busier. So what do they need to do? Same thing. Institute the same rule. Now I'm not I'm not opposed to having somebody get seen by a doctor or a medic. I'm not opposed to going to the call. But like James said, if it's just a ride, there's nothing. We can't do anything. Oh, you've been constipated for three days. Well, I mean that sucks. I know that hurts. Been there. You got four vehicles outside. Hop in one. Hell, when I was when I was in med school, 
my wife was texting me or emailing me actually about her the headache she had it kind of sounded like it could be either a cluster headache a migraine it could have been an aneurysm or a stroke so what do we do i'll meet you at home got home took her down to the er her blood pressure was like 260 over or something it was ridiculous but she was walking she was talking she had no facial droop no slurred speech what's what's, what's an ambulance going to do for her nothing take her now I have to wait another 5-10 minutes for them to get there depending on where they're coming from because you never know that closest one might not be might be dealing with a drunk and your so, next ambulance is 15 minutes and that 5-10 to 10 minutes I could be at almost the hospital we walked in told what was going on they took a quick blood pressure right back because that's what she needed I mean that's the what having a personal responsibility I don't know I know that I had to do, like, my first actual captain thing the other day. I had to flag an address for abuse of the 911 system. And how did that make you feel? All powerful. Did. I <laughs> am captain. Yeah. Probably would have been if I would have been the one to actually send the email, but I was quickly told that the email has to come from your chief, not from you. So, because I called. And they're like, oh, yeah, your chief needs to email this guy and do this. Do that. And, oh, okay. I'm still just a middleman. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about the process later. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. yeah. Trust me. We, we, we know it. <laughs> yeah. But, so, but that brings up something. And he's maybe, a captain. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> we don't even need I'm not getting See on how my easy that was See how I easy that one not, was <laughs> I'm not getting on my soapbox about that So let me get this straight Did you call in a complaint to dispatch um, About an address No I called dispatch to ask them who to call mm. Or actually to have them do a temporary flag And then Because you're complaining about the address No mm. No I called and said, this address needs to be flagged because of Sounds this. Sounds like something Captain Complaint would do. <laughs> I, already, I already hear a phone call. This is Captain Jeremy Green. I have something for you to put in the system. <laughs> <laughs> and they went, who? <laughs> Click. <laughs> Fuck you both. <laughs> We'll explain the process I later. know the fucking process. It's all right. When I call him, I'm like, hey, it's Moran. What? Yep. <laughs> That's what I get. <laughs> What's because you call him every call, every, after every call, you're on the phone with him. No. What the fuck are you talking about? I know people in dispatch. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Anyway. The only time I call and complain is if I have to take an out-of-town trip to Harrisonville. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my question to you two was going to be, how effective is that really, though? Because we have these processes to to take care of that. You know, we have community paramedics and this and that and the other thing, all of these apparatus to take care of those type of calls. How effective are they? Um, very minimal because we don't have the adequate staffing for it. Um, our community paramedic program is modeled like many other cities, and it's a fantastic program. But the problem is we have two individuals doing it, and we need about 12 just for the sheer volume it was one of those things that were like oh yeah we could need this and we're like oh we got the resource now let's use it and they're like oh it's that bad mm -hmm. okay yeah. you know like they're, old... not, they're not just dealing with i keep touching stuff <laughs> you're getting mittens <laughs> keep your booger hooks <laughs> off of shit <laughs> but they're not they're not just dealing with the addresses you flag right there's tons of others yeah to deal with, including our growing homeless population Right. That that in itself, that's a twenty person operation. If not more. And you're you're talking each camp and they're massive. Yeah. And then walking deep into woods to to other ones to make sure that we're not you know our crews aren't having to go out there. Yeah. Because, you know, they still need medical care. Yeah, but that also brings up shortage of police officers. Yep. Myself, personally, I wouldn't be sending individuals deep into the woods to a homeless camp by themselves. Oh, that happens all the time. Mm-hmm. Without PD. 
Because that's how the call comes in. Mm -hmm. So just because you're deep in the woods doesn't mean that we can't go out there. I understand that. I'm just saying it's not very smart. It's probably going to be fine 99 times out of 100. I'm not disagreeing. One time it's not going to be. I'm not disagreeing. But that's the nature of the beast. Right. Everybody's short-staffed. We're all trying to make do. It's like we're all in the fucking Marine Corps. I want to go back to the cat program, which I'm pretty sure it, it was similar to like community. It was like a resource thing. Yeah, but I actually think it was just a hit squad because did you ever, and I mean fucking ever, see that person again after you referred them to Cap? Yeah. <laughs> there, okay, so the, the, <laughs> the couple of times that we did it at the station before we worked together, we never saw those people again. I'm telling you, it so was a it, hit it, squad. So that was depending dependent on if that person accepted the help or not. Yeah. I think so, that help was we kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you know the city was run by the mafia for yeah. a while. I'm just saying. I'm telling you, we're gonna like just find some like mass grave. And we're like, oh, there they are. <laughs> it's like in Yellowstone where you just keep throwing them off the cliff. And, like, and again, everybody mm. that's uh, watching or listening, I want to remind you: this is the Christmas episode. <laughs> There's a whole lot of exaggeration going on here. <laughs> I, it's not as bad as we make it out to be. We're yeah. just really bitching right now. Yeah. This is everybody's on their soapbox and kind of venting. So, but let, let's get back to the original topic of what we were talking about, about us I, having to work on Christmas. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I, we've went through like six topics. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas and Thanksgiving, you know, I was just checking the time. What we got going on over there? Mm -hmm. What's going uh, what, on? You, what are you doing? Oh, huh? hey, what's that? You got your seat all the way up so you can see the TV? No, I'm actually stretching my back because my hips are killing me right now. <laughs> so, but yeah, so for me, I think, and maybe your mom was a cop, right? So for you, probably it's not that different for you. You probably didn't have much of an idea about parents being away on no. the holidays. So no, we, were, we were always somewhere, whether people, families come to the house or yeah. we were going out of town. So I grew up. Small town, Louisiana. My dad worked in the offshore oil field. Right? Small town where? Louisiana. Mm, is that how you say it, though? Uh, for all you Yankees, so you can understand what the fuck I'm saying, yes, that's how I say it. <laughs> anyway. Anybody north of Louisiana is a Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> and south. And east. And a little bit west. Yeah. Go Tigers. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> There's, I can think hey, of 10 on top hey. of my head now Anyway So he was always Usually he was gone on a holiday Or was coming back like the day before the holiday He worked 14 days on 14 days off Or even 30 on 30 off 28, 28, whatever you want to call it But he would be gone So sometimes we would be celebrating Christmas and Thanksgiving On the same day And sometimes it would be Christmas in January, you know, so it wasn't for me, whenever I got on the fire department, it wasn't a big transition of, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be there for Christmas. It's the I same. I have to work. It's the it's, same for me. What I've struggled with, I think the most is realizing that's not the case for everybody. Yeah. You know, like when it comes, you try to make plans with other family or friends and mm -hmm. like, oh, we'll just do it like a couple days after. And they're like, huh? Yeah. Like it's, I just, I'm like, God, it. We're giving gifts to each other. Fuck, we can do it in March for all I care. Yeah. Like, that's all it, That's all you're doing. We're eating and giving gifts. Nobody said it has to be a specific day, but so many people are just so indoctrinated in that. They're like, Christmas, must open presents. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't, we, honestly, since I've been on, we've always just adjusted my schedule. Yeah. Or, I mean, the schedule of when we're going to do it, whether it's the day before, day after. And now we're like, well... What we do on still on Saturday? Yeah, we will do it on the weekend. Yeah, no, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, you guys don't have young kids. Nope. So, I mean, he's nineteen. He didn't care. Yeah. So for you, I mean, that transitions. Yeah, fairly easy now. We'll wait on my brother to have kids. Then it'll be fun again. Yeah, because the little kids make Christmas fun. Oh, absolutely. The mystique of it, and the you know the Santa Claus and the elves and watching yeah. them open gifts, and they come open yours. I'm like, open it. I don't care. Yeah, I'm a little bummed out that I'm going to have to work on Christmas this year because I missed... Yeah, James will work for you. Uh, I missed my nephew's Christmas, his first Christmas last year. So 
was hoping I'd get to be there and whenever I before I got promoted. And I'm I'm doing it now too. It's fucking contagious. Before I got promoted, Just I was like blanket sweet. and keep your hands under the blanket, you know. The problem. Yeah. I've seen a lot of movement from that blanket. I know. We're not gonna talk about it. I think we should address the elephant in the room. Dude, that's so rude. So what? I have a larger penis that people compare to an elephant. What about it? Jesus, moving on. That's not what I was talking about, but okay. What were you going to No, it doesn't matter now. He ruined it with a dick joke. You wanted to talk about moobs to start the episode. Get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault you got titties. It's from all the steroids you didn't do. It's one to me turkey dinners. Not on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Not on Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Cal- calories yeah, on Thanksgiving yeah. and Christmas don't count. Yeah. That's a, that's a scientific fact. But if you eat them the oh. day after, then they go straight to your hips. It's yep. just, yep. Yep. That's mm. why we're all so overweight. That's why you can eat 15 yeah. pieces of pumpkin pie, a couple of pecan pie, chocolate. I like chocolate pie. It's, I've never been a fan. It's not a pie fan. I like, I, I'll do pumpkin pie. I'll eat apple pie if there's a gun to my head, but other than that. Yeah. I will tear up some apple pie and Pe- cherry pie. Pecan and apple, cherry. It's not pie guy. It's Rachel, ice cream. Rachel brought Why home pie some... when you have cake. No, no. Listen to this. Mm. Rachel was out with some friends about a week or so, two weeks ago maybe. Went to the cheesecake factory. Came home with one of their cheesecakes. It was cheesecake. It was like pumpkin cheesecake with apple pie in it, or not apple, but uh, pecan pie in it. I destroyed that. It was phenomenal. I like cheesecake too. Yeah. Did it come with a glucometer? It did not. I did. Yeah, you don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whenever it says hi, that's uh, it's not saying hello. <laughs> I always love those what's, calls. What's wrong? Well, my glucometer just been telling me hello for the last three days. I don't know what's wrong. What do you mean? It just keep saying hi. So I say hi. And go about my very way. But my pee smells funny and I have a headache, so I don't know what's going on. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah. So anyway, back to the... I want the, some pie now. <laughs> I'm going to text my wife here in a minute. Hey, you got to make some pie tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Woman, make pie. <laughs> she will. There's a quick trip just down the street. I'm sure they have pie. They got everything no, else. They got the everything else. It's not the same. I like her pies. Okay. Giggity. Yeah. Not touching that. <laughs> God, this episode went so colossally fucking sideways. Screw it. Yeah. I like it, though, because you finally have, I think, let loose a little bit. Nope. On this episode. Nope. That's not letting loose? Nope. I'm, I'm, about, nope. To, I'm about to throw this really nice coaster <laughs> right across and smack him on his freaking forehead. Why would you do that? Because you're on your fucking phone. It's He's a- ordering me pie, man. Leave him alone. <laughs> Are you seriously ordering? You're on Grubhub right now, aren't you? <laughs> you-, <laughs> you can't talk about pie with two fat guys and not expect us to order a pie. <laughs> hey. I'm going to keep fucking ordering mm-hmm. you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Is it going to be from the Cheesecake Factory? Because that's going to be like 100 bucks. Yeah. And I don't think they deliver this far north. So, uh, somebody will put a big enough dip in there. They'll go down and get it and yeah. come on back. Oh, I can't ask You can't ask the address. Mm-hmm. <laughs> come on. He takes for the address. <laughs> 123 Main Street. Any town, USA. <laughs> get off your phone. Oh. I'm about to take this really nice coaster here. You hit him in your head with it. Jackasses. <laughs> See, yeah, I, what? I, I don't even, I don't even know. I don't know. Maybe we need to do more episodes like this where it's just we complete That's fun, total random bullshit. <laughs> the funny thing is, the example is one, two, three Main Street. <laughs> Gee, I wonder how a fat guy knew that. <laughs> <laughs> and a lazy one at that. Yeah. Man, I'm not going to drive four blocks for Burger King. Grubhub is on your home screen, isn't it? Actually, I don't have the app. 
I don't have any of those. Jane's got them all. Oh. <laughs> Blame your wife. Yes. No, she does. She, she took them away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I spent too much money. <laughs> no, I mean, we, we were sitting there one night, didn't want to, she didn't want to cook. Mm-hmm. And I'm a shitty cook, we know that. So Established fact. And we had nothing thought out. So she didn't want to go to the store. I'm not going to the store. Got my own reasons for that. And she, so she downloaded like Grubhub and DoorDash and all that. And I mean, it wasn't bad. A little cold when we got it, but I, I yeah. don't care. Yeah. You used to order things that, you know, doesn't affect affect the taste and, the, and all that when that's a little bit cold. Yeah. Where it's not piping hot. I don't know, dude. I, you know, I think that's like maybe one of my own personal things. I don't know any other firemen that really, I haven't discussed the issue with them, but like eating cold food at home really irks me because I have to do it so much at work. I just get used to it. Yeah, but it's like whenever I'm at home, I want to eat it when it's hot. Yeah. You so know? Like, like the other day when we left here, I ate lukewarm ribs. We'll see. There that's was no ribs, size. Though. There was no size. I was like, you know what? I don't feel like getting chips out. So I ate a pound of ribs. And then. Wash it down with another pound? No. <laughs> Because I would have. It's, I, well, there was no ribs left. <laughs> <laughs> it was an entire slab. <laughs> but, 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 I mean, there was no sides or anything. And then, yeah. I, you know, half hour later, I promptly... Pooped? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are some foods... What do you guys you like know? to drink? I'm a Pepsi uh, guy, man. Okay. Yeah. Pepsi's... Pepsi's the way to go. You may want to order something for Rachel if you're ordering food i don't know what she's doing for dinner i got her okay should i get another pepsi um she likes i've never really seen her drink soda yeah she really doesn't but like sprite or god dang it yeah sprites sprite's always safe for her orange high c no you don't like high c didn't say I didn't like icy. You don't like orange. No, I didn't fruit, say I didn't fruit like. Fruit punch it. is better than orange. Yes, fruit yeah. punch is better. Fruit, fruit punch icy is the shit. Yes. Mm-hmm. I still, I'll still every once in a while buy a Hawaiian punch. If I'm going to drink something like that, it's going to be sun kissed. Over Fanta. Yes. Yeah, I gotta go with sun kissed over Fanta. But except it, now, now when you do that, like the Mexican Fantas. Just had one. It was great. Those are delicious. A Mexican Coke. All day long. It's because they use real sugar. I know, and it why. tastes so much better. <laughs> Although when you like drink the Mexican Pepsi, it's not as good as like art the Pepsi here. Because I think they use fake sugar in Mexican Pepsi and maybe. real sugar in American Pepsi. I maybe. think it's backwards. But I will, especially like if I go to a Mexican restaurant, and as soon as I see, them, I'm like, bring yeah. me six of those. So let's let's uh, let's talk about that for a second, James. You just did a big motorcycle trip down to Mexico. Would not. Hmm? Would not rec- recommend. Not be my top five recommendations. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just. So was it just completely stressful the whole time? Or it was. The roads were terrible. Um. Lots of like potholes real nasty thick seams Mm -hmm. sand sand and sand yeah um so that sucked um excuse me i kind of told you guys about it like a little bit the other night on our live episode it uh i think i would enjoy (laughs) wow i think i wouldn't enjoy like maybe an all-inclusive resort yeah but for like it just it's <clears throat> the big one is the roads, right? Like, if I'm on high alert every time I'm trying to ride my motorcycle around, it's just not fun. Yeah. Well, um, it kind of takes the purpose away from... Exactly. So that was, like, the big one for me. Um, like, everybody trying to sell you knockoff shit was kind of annoying. Now, I heard, like, in the all-inclusive resort, that doesn't happen. Yeah. They, not as much. Yeah. They uh, pretty much keep them off of the... Off of the beach. Because what was yeah. it? It was Cabo, wasn't it, where they had the, the line yeah. that they couldn't cross? Yeah. Um, there was what was cool on the ride home. 
there's like this I don't know, 20 mile section where it's like the American no hassle zone where like the federalities can't touch you people can't try and sell you shit what's funny is like in the little town right before the border like where that stops it's like they all just camp down the other <laughs> side of the line so I mean like the minute and, and what they do is they catch you in line to get to the border yeah so you're there and like they aren't like hi would you like this they're like in your face like hey you want sunglasses I'm like no those look like shit and the O is wrong for Oakley so no <laughs> like, <laughs> joke please yeah so it, that it was just kind of annoying now Arizona like coming back and on the way down oh my god Arizona's beautiful so we're I mean you guys obviously you trailered mm-hmm. to somewhere I trailered to Mesa okay rode down to Yuma there's a program called Bunk a Biker okay. um, and it's free it's just like a Facebook group and people just you basically crash it another biker's house it's really cool so this guy was a retired federal cop and his wife um they made their money because she did the she implemented like the training program for cerner so like if a hospital goes to like cerner or epics like technology yeah her company goes in and does all the training for it Mm-hmm. nationwide so they made a lot of money yeah and they have this massive like million bedroom house down in um yuma and yeah we stayed there it was super cool uh that little, it was actually a uh like an old well it's not even that old it was built in like 2000 i remember he said like kind of like a compound house for like religion when, when you think of like Winko, it was kind of like that. So like, the, the, you joined a cult, didn't you? The, the, the pool, easy there, Branch was like clearly like a baptism pool, but it was a big baptism pool. So I'm that was the pool. It was cool. Like that's it was like they had it, and I think the feds busted up. The house went on the market. So, Do they have a bunch of pineapples all over the house? No. They should have looked harder. <laughs> Uh, what what I was like, dang! I could definitely live down here. He's like, yeah, other than the camel sp- like camel spider mating season, it's not bad. I'm like, well, what? Have you never seen a camel spider? I've seen camel spiders. I didn't know we had camel spiders in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And for about two weeks, they will just crawl all over. They come up out of the ground. Yeah, and they're everywhere. Well, they do the same thing in Colorado, the tarantula yeah. mating season. Nope. I'm out. Yep. Pass. Southeastern Colorado. I was, yeah. I was, Pass. I was totally down until that, but it was interesting. He was saying like, so a lot, a lot of the, his area, it's a gated community. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are snowbirds. Um, and he was saying like all the stuff they have to do, like in the off season, to, like keep the house good. Like they have to put like saran wrap over the toilets or the water will dry out and all yeah. the sewer gas will fill the house. Like all, wow. all this, all the stuff I just never thought about. But when it's 120 degrees every day in the summer. Yeah. And you're stuff, not running your air conditioner. And you're not running your air conditioner. Mm, that makes so, sense. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was interesting. Just, hmm. um, they'll put like buckets of water in like every room just to keep the humidity up. Um, cause otherwise like window seals, door seals will just dry out, dry mm-hmm. out and you're replacing them every year. It was fascinating. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Arizona was absolutely beautiful. Love to ride through it more. Um, I'd love to work myself back up towards Flagstaff, all the way up to like Zion, some of that. But definitely mm-hmm. recommend it for all the motorcycle watchers or yeah. riders in the group. Well, that's the that's the trip that we've been planning for two years now. I'll tell you this: go ahead, make it three. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking about that though. I would much rather just. I'm telling you, it'd be ten times easier just to trailer it out there. We're gaining a day by doing that, and then just yeah, but you're losing the experience. Of there riding through Western Kansas. No. You did you pay attention whenever we were talking about the route we were no. going to be? No. Yeah. Huh. No. And how did it? Get, how did we get there? Went through a little bit of Kansas, then Oklahoma, then you're in Texas, buddy, and then you're in New Mexico. And that whole route sucks till Albuquerque. I've done it twice. Once on a bike. Actually, I've done it multiple times. Once on a bike. We're not taking the interstate. That's the point. Which is even worse. Because you know what you know what Kansas and Oklahoma and that part of New Mexico is? Two lane farm roads that you're either waiting on combines or you're passing semis that are throwing dirt up in your face. Done it. We're trailering. <laughs> or I'm fucking trailering and following you guys. I don't care. I, honestly it's hard to argue that logic. <laughs> I mean 
you are going to be passing a lot of semis because they take those roads to avoid the, the tolls, tolls and the yeah. yeah, and you're stuck behind not, them. Not just the tolls, but the uh, way stations. You're stuck behind yeah. them on pa- until you get a passing lane every five miles, and they're just throwing shit in your face. It's not fun, and you save time. Literally, you trailer it out there, and then you just park it, and you. Go. Yeah, but then Everyone you ride. You can take his truck, so it's not our vehicles. <laughs> True. Yeah. But then we have to end up back at the same place we started. Yeah, but if we you pick that centralized location, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, pick, pick mm. Phoenix, and you can ride all the way up through Colorado, Utah, come back down, save a day each way. Yeah. It's a way to do it. How many bikes can we get on the trailer? I'm looking at a new trailer, so. What? Nothing. What? Yeah, I mean, how many trailers do you need? Well, I'm I'm gonna sell my um gooseneck and buy an enclosed. Cool. So when my grandpa and I take trips, we can take the jeep and both bikes. Probably so, get six in there. No, I'm looking at thirty five footer, so probably eight to ten. That's I don't want to go out trip that big. Are you gonna have that before the Rubicon? Mm-hmm. Probably have it in a couple months. Huh. Oh, would you like to reserve some space? I mean, you're the one who said we need to make sure that we trailer out there and trailer back. <laughs> yeah, insurance policy. So anyway, thanks for stopping <laughs> by the Washdown podcast today. <laughs> Unless you're a motorcycle enthusiast, keep listening. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did I tell you about what happened to my bike? No. So the other day when it was 70 degrees, mm-hmm. went out to pull it out in the driveway so we could wash it before I put the cover on. Mm-hmm. Completely dead. Did you charge it? You got yeah. The tender? So I put put it on the tender. Took about a full day to charge all the way. Mm-hmm. Go turn it on. The lights, they, they come on, but it says enter code mm-hmm. or enter pin. And then that goes away and I can start it. So I don't know. Like you don't have your, like as if you didn't have your as, fob. As, I, as I don't have my fob, but I had my fob. Uh, it could be the battery in your fob's dead. Could be. Yeah. Because that, that happened on one of my bikes. It wouldn't start, wouldn't start. And then finally, I went and got my other key, and it started. I was like, "Oh, okay." Well, oh no, I mean it was fob. like it was dead, dead. Like you, yeah. cut, you hit the, you, you know, because that that bullshit security on there that, that blinks the lights. Mm-hmm. So did that, nothing. Uh, travel mode, by mm-hmm. the way, key to trailering bikes. Yes, because if you don't hit your first stop at the gas station, your trailer will be alarming. <laughs> 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 That's fun. Yeah. Uh, like, we literally get out and you just hear beep, 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 like five different alarms. I'm like, what in the fuck? Yeah, see, mine doesn't make noise. It just flashes. Yeah, so go back and <laughs> the, turn off every bike and start it and put them in travel mode. I'm like, idiot. <laughs> I'll be honest. I've been riding motor- motorcycles for a very long time, and I didn't know about travel mode because yeah. I've never trailered my shit out. Let's just ride it. But, you know, he, he makes some strong, good arguments. So I think it's a conversation I, we can have. Have you rode your motorcycle I, 16 hours one way? 12. 16? 12. Oh, so don't get on me. Multiple times. About trailer and bikes. Huh. If I'd have had a place to go that was 16 hours away, I would have rode it 16 hours. Yeah, fair enough. I think of how much more stuff we could take and we could buy. Have you seen the inside of his truck, though? Well, we're going to make him clean it. Good we're, luck with that. We're going to get some lawn chairs. We're going to sit down. Every time he stops cleaning, we're going to spray him with the hose. <laughs> Just a shot collar. Bad Moran. <laughs> Bad Moran. <laughs> Little spray bottle. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a shot collar. One better. <laughs> oh. We're going to watch him flop on the ground. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's be honest. We'd all be taking a turn with the shot collar on. Oh, yeah. Mm, yes. Yep. I no. I listen. No. If Nelson and I do it, and you refuse to, mm-hmm. we'll just hold you down and put it on. You two are largish guys. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put Moran on your chest. Yeah. Take away. It's your not air. gonna work for you. I'm really good at manipulating people mm-hmm. in small areas. Mm-hmm. We do it for a job. Mm-hmm. You're no different. Um, I'm a little different in that I'm not high and I'm trained 
<laughs> yeah. Remember, he beat him a 12-year-old. Oh, yeah. Kid was 13 at least. Dude, if he was 11, <laughs> he had I weigh 145 pounds. <laughs> Your gut weighs 145 pounds. <laughs> I said me, not my gut. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, on that note, I think we can conclude this episode. I had fun. Yeah. Everybody, thanks for stopping by for the Christmas episode. <laughs> I hope we lifted your holiday spirits. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, on a serious note, though, if you're having issues, if this time of the year is, you know, I don't want to use the buzzword triggering, but, you know, it's an appropriate word in this situation. You know, if you're having a hard time, reach out. Um there are resources out there. There are people that care. And if you know somebody that is struggling this time of year, reach out. Um, just show them that you give a shit. So, all right. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next week.